Your support helps us bring you programs you love. Go to wyomingpbs.org, click on support, and become a sustaining member or an annual member. It's easy and secure. Thank you. My name is Mark Jenkins. I'm from Laramie, Wyoming. I'm a writer and I've spent the last 40 years climbing around the world. I'd done a, an expedition to Tibet in the spring, cold alpine climbing. Then I did an expedition to Alaska in the summer, cold alpine climbing. So I was thinking, this is the last thing I need is another cold expedition. I wanted to climb someplace warm that had rock climbing, big walls, and unclimbed routes. At the same time, I was thinking about who could I do this expedition with? And probably only in Wyoming could you get on the phone and call three guys and tell them, we're leaving in a week, we'll be gone for a month, you need $2,000 cash in your pocket, and everything we're gonna do is completely unclimbed and unexplored. And I got three Wyoming guys to say yes on the phone immediately, and within a week, we were on a plane to Cairo. Funding for this program is made possible in part by the members of the Wyoming PBS Foundation. Thank you for your support. My name is Micah Rush. I'm from Casper, Wyoming. I'm a full-time firefighter, a mountain guide, and I run a rescue business, as well as a full-time dad and husband. I'd never even heard of climbing in Egypt. I think when Mark called, he didn't have to do much convincing. It snowed a couple feet in Casper, and all he had to say was warm weather and uh, granite climbing, and I was like fired up to go. I've always said, do we climb to travel or travel to climb? I've always loved going and seeing different cultures and meeting different people. My name's Kyle Elmquist. I'm from Lander, Wyoming, and I work for the Wyoming Outdoor Council in conservation and land stewardship. Mark kind of got a hold of me out of the blue and asked me if I wanted to go on an adventure to the Sinai. I was really excited to go somewhere that's still wild and off the map. It was kind of crazy how fast the trip came together. We all just put our trust in Mark and jumped off the deep end. And I could have asked for a better team. Everybody's brought a skill set to this expedition. We've got Kyle Elmquist, who's a hardcore sport climber. The rock climbing around Lander is mainly sport climbing, which means that the bolts are already placed in the rock, which generally means it's a little lower risk and the focus is more on sheer athleticism and difficulty. And then we've got Micah Rush, who's kind of an all-rounder, you know, can, can lead 513 trad route, same thing on sport, also alpine climbing. He's a fully certified international guide. In Casper, we climb at Fremont Canyon. Fremont Canyon has a mixture of sport climbs and traditional climbs, which makes for really well-rounded climbers. I'm kind of the old guy of the, of the crew, uh, lots of trips, so I feel pretty comfortable going into remote places and uh, going with a smile and, and a good nature and things seem to work out. If you grow up in Laramie, you end up climbing in Vitavu, which is only 15 miles away. Vitavu is kind of special for its wide cracks. It's too big for your hands, too big for your fists, but you can't get your entire body into it, so it's called an off-width. And Vitavu is known for off-widths, it's kind of a specialty. Um, one that I happen to love. I know with this team, we're prepared to climb any wall we encounter because each team member has a specific skill set. Landing in Cairo is kind of what I thought it would be, just this 21 million people stacked on top of each other. Hustle and bustle, there's you know tons of smog, and just a city life that none of us Wyoming boys are really used to. Cairo's an amazing city, and it was really cool to see the, the pyramids, so much history there, but I don't think we could get out of there fast enough. But our goal was to get down in the southern Sinai. Took a six or seven hour minibus ride down to St. Catharines. The Sinai Peninsula joins Africa and Asia and is named after Mount Sinai where Moses found the Ten Commandments. 
Because of its unique location, it has a long history of conflict and foreign occupation. But in spite of this, Sinai became a major tourist destination due to its natural beauty, world-class diving, and deep religious history. If you just want to do climbing, if that's all you're interested in, and you want to do trad, you never have to leave Wyoming. You could spend your entire life in the Wind Rivers and Cloud Peak, the whole thing. But we came here specifically to experience this culture. I was really looking for a place where we could do some unclimbed walls and was looking at Africa because I've been, spent a lot of time in Africa over the years and I know that there are big rock walls that are kind of unknown. So I started searching, doing homework and after a few weeks of work I found these walls here in Southern Sinai and I make the distinction between Southern Sinai and Northern Sinai because Northern Sinai is where there's been a lot of political strife and there have been more terrorist attacks and Southern Sinai has been largely safe. I mean tourists are coming to St. Catharines. These are just your average Germans who fly down here to hike to the top of Mount Sinai. Doing more homework, I ran into a climber named Dave Lucas. Called him in London and said, I'm thinking about going there. He said, it's a fantastic place to go. And he basically just opened up and shared everything he knew. Then he sent me all the routes he'd done. He's, he's eventually going to put together a guidebook. But he said, it's all granite. Much of it's good granite, which psyched me up being a trad climber. And he really encouraged me to go. After getting out of the city of Cairo, you could tell all of us when we arrived at St. Catharines were super fired up to go climbing. And so that night we sort of took off and like ran up this hill to go check out the climbing because none of us could wait to climb. We arrived in St. Catharines yesterday and started to check out some of the local climbing. Super cool area. It's like these massive granite domes. And uh, we were reading sort of the descriptions of some of the area and we found these two routes we're about to get on. One's this overhanging off with. It sounds unprotected, but Mark's psyched to look at it. And then there's another one that sounds like tight fingers. It sounds really good. And we're at uh, Jebel Bada is this area. It's super cool landscape though. There's rocks everywhere you see in St. Catharines. And it's like, what do you want to climb? What I love about trad climbing is that you can just walk up to any cliff, a cliff that perhaps no one has even ever touched, and assuming there are cracks, with your rack, your rope, and a pack on your back, you can climb it. As far as that goes, that was pretty that's sick. As far as that goes, good. I mean, pretty good as far as dirty climbing. Uh, <laughs> dirty? We don't like it to was talk clean, about it. man. Uh, it's more like uh, just dirty climbing, and we don't really want to talk about it or do it. That's what I mean, that dirty. That was amazing. Ah, really? That was yeah. really good, like the best rock we've had. My background is mostly in sport climbing. I've done a fair bit of trad, but not like Mark and Micah. I haven't been pioneering walls and cleaning off new stuff. Like, they're pretty seasoned at this stuff, whereas it's kind of new for me. So going on an expedition like this, there's always a question mark if we're going to find good rock or not. After the first day of climbing on Jebel Bata, we knew right away the Sinai had a ton of potential. It's uh, 3.30 in the morning, 3.30 a.m., and we're about to go off on a hike to climb Mount Musa, which is also called Mount Sinai. It's where Moses received the Ten Commandments. We should be there at sunrise and see the sunrise from the summit of Mount Sinai. By the time we got up there, we were really surprised. We found like 30 or 40 other tourists up there.
their history and, and culture is so deeply rooted here. It's really cool to be able to witness the ancient nature of this place. It feels humbling to be able to come here and go on an adventure and meanwhile like experience this really rich history that has shaped humanity for thousands of years. At the base of Mount Sinai lies St. Catherine's Monastery. Completed in 565 AD, it is one of the oldest working Christian monasteries in the world and also contains the oldest library in the world. Its location is where Moses saw the burning bush and purportedly a descendant of the original bush remains to this day. The burning bush, it will be the one to the right side, the big one, not the little one. Because Moses was a central figure for Islam and Judaism as well, pilgrims of many different faiths visit from all over the world. A Muslim mosque was added within the walls of the Christian monastery in 1100 AD, only further adding to the complex religious history here. Its cultural and religious significance have earned it the designation of a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So after climbing a couple days around St. Catharines, we decided to head into the backcountry and try to find some of these walls we had looked at on Google Earth and had imagery of. David said there are three or four of these mountains that you should try to get out to see. And the highest one, the most difficult one, and the longest wall was Mount Naja. Mountain in Bedouin is Jebel, so Jebel Naja. So we hired a local Bedouin guide and um, took off to find this wall, uh, Jebel Naja. We got camels. Uh, which is kind of fantastic. We're about to ride a camel. We've been looking forward to this for a long time. I came all the way to Egypt. I'm going to ride a camel. <laughs> and it looks like it's going to be super painful. Way more painful than a horse, just the way the saddles are set up. But we'll find out. you got to have one hand out like this. Yeah. <laughs> This land is owned by Bedouins, and to just go out on your own is a bit disrespectful. So you hire a guide. Not only is it essential for you, but it's essential for them, because these are people who, when the tourist trade was much healthier, they had full-time jobs guiding people on treks. And now that the, the tourism has dropped so much, they really need the work. Besides that, it's kind of fun. How else are you going to get to know the culture? Camel camping is awesome. They can carry up to 600 pounds, so they were carrying all of our stuff and we were just following behind with a lightweight pack and enjoying the hike. So we'd come through these little villages and we went up in this village where they offered us tea, which was really cool. Basically these men, they come up and they have to get the water to the villages, so they come up every day. It sounds like about an hour hike and they come up and they get the generators going or get the wells moving, however they do, to get the water to it. And then they were just hanging out all day, so it seems like they smoke and, and drink tea, so we were offered uh, both, which is pretty cool. And the tea is amazing, yeah. Now, I was hiking with our guide today and we were talking about the difference between Egyptians and the Bedouin. And he said even going all the way back to Pharaonic times, which is two to three thousand years ago, the Egyptians primarily lived on the Nile and the Bedouins were the ones who lived out in the desert. So the Egyptians are city people and the Bedouins are mountain people or desert people or both. The Bedouins, up until probably the last fifty years, were nomads and they'd go up in the mountains with their sheep and goats and camels in the springtime and spend the summer in the mountains in this region because it's much cooler and then they'd come down in the winter when it's cold. Most of them have gardens. If you look at this out here you're going to think that it's all desert but in fact there are little gardens everywhere we've gone. We've seen little gardens in these ravines that are watered with wells where they grow figs, dates, apricots, peaches, pears, tomatoes, cucumbers, very rich abundance. Uh, 
Uh, with literally rock everywhere around the Sinai, not all of it's great, a lot of it's crumbly. So walking through this drainage, we look up and see this massive wall, and we knew we had found some good rock. You know, it's probably 1,500 feet tall, something like that, because these pitches are starting here and going to eight or nine pitches. Let's see. The main event is the one that he, he tried and didn't finish, and that's this. We believe it'll go. Neither we can cut right, or maybe go up to that corner and go up that way. So the main event is kind of the main line, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it is. I mean, when you look, if you just look up at the face and go, okay, what's the... Yeah, that's it. What's the obvious line yep. up the middle? That's it. It is. Right? Yep. Mm -hmm. We're going to get some goods here. <laughs> <laughs> We're really only probably eight miles as the crow flies northwest of St. Catharines. We're not that far away. We're a one-day walk with camels, okay? So we're not that far out, but it feels like we're out there. And the camel drivers are also our cooks. So we have a cook named Salem. He's our guide, our cook, our interpreter, general factotum, he does everything. And then his helper is Rajab, he's 16. We saddled up the camel today, which Rajab's been awesome. He's a 16 year old kid who's sort of been like the apprentice guide. He doesn't like getting up early, but I don't think any 16-year-old kid does. It's cool to see him work. Yeah, I think there's huge similarities between the Wyoming Cowboys and the Bedouin mountain life. They use their camels like horses as pack animals and get super deep into the mountains. We have conversations every night with Salem. He speaks enough English for us to try to get to know what it's like to be a Bedouin in the 21st century. Me, Salem, Ramadan, from Santa Catherine. My family, my, my wife, they have uh, three boys. Old one, Basim, second one, Karam, small one, Yusuf. The Bedouins themselves, well, first of all, they're outdoor people still. Humans all used to be outdoor people. Now most of them are indoor people. And they're obviously happy when they're in the mountains. You listen to Rajab, he's out collecting wood and he's singing to himself. You know, one of the first things Salem said to me as we were walking through the first wadi, he said, mountains are so lovely. I love the mountains, and, and we do too. Those, that's the kind of people we are. We're from Wyoming, so I, I think we fit pretty well together. I feel more at home here, sort of off the beaten path in the Sinai than I did in Cairo, which in our hotel room, it was, I feel way more comfortable here. I feel like I can breathe and I have space. We all feel like, yeah, this is where we belong with the Bedouin in the mountains. I thought I'd be roughing it more on this expedition, but having the camels was pretty crazy. These camels can carry up to 600 pounds, and we called it camel camping, it's like car camping. Yeah, it was really nice. It's really cool how they make their bread. He just puts flour, salt, some water, and then kneads it all up and cooks it right there on a pan right over the fire. It's ready to go. The Bedouins here are not engaged in terrorism whatsoever. The terrorism that's happening is mostly from what they call Daesh. So it's foreigners coming and causing problems here. The Bedouins aren't involved in that at all. Well, they don't even make a distinction within Islam what they are. They don't claim to be Sufi or Shia or Sunni. They say, no, we're just Muslims. In fact, when I had a conversation with our guide about this, he said, you know, it's really not that hard to be a decent person. That's all you expect in the Bedouin culture is to be a good person. And so the first day we went after this, this sort of king line that we'd heard about, it splits right up the center of the wall and the rock looks amazing. first two pitches are done and some of the best pitches anywhere they're really good pitches nice dude thanks brother yeah but then we found out pretty fast why it hadn't gone any higher. It's sort of like stopper 
no gear, really hard climbing. So we kind of got shut down there. And, and so the next day we went up for like a work mission. It starts off with like 40 or 50 feet of, you know, this hands flake climbing. And then you go into just a savage boulder problem. That's cool. It's pretty blank. There's no way to protect it without putting in bolts. So we're debating, do we put them in? And if it goes free, we're still working. It's super hard. I mean, it just gets harder and harder and it turns out to be like 50 feet of really hard climbing. something there though like in your back foot yeah. and then matching and palming and then foot and then get the other foot up so we're really trying to push it to go we just don't know if it'll go uh, we've put in um, two days work on it and tomorrow will be another work day so we're going up to see if uh, the upper pitches even go and if they go then we can come down and work on what we think will be the hardest pitch on the route So this is day seven of camel camping at our little oasis in the Sinai. Just behind me is Jebel Naja. We're putting up a new line, which is kind of like the king line, and it's really impressive. The rock is really good. We've put a lot of work into it so far. We put five days into it, and it's required some cleaning, added a few bolts, figured out the pitches and how it goes, and it's coming together to be like a spectacular line. Really excited. Tomorrow we're going to try and put it together as a team and take it to the top. Yeah, we've all come to the conclusion that uh, we're not going to get hung up if we don't send the crux pitch on the route. We did send the route on top rope. We know it's possible, but we're not going to get hung up because it's our last day. We want to have fun. There's a lot of unknowns above us that we want to still send and yeah, we're just going to enjoy this day. Top of pitch two, the temps are really good. Started at 4 a.m. this morning. Yeah, we're psyched, we're at the bottom of the 513 pitch. It's feeling good today. It's cool to have the opportunity to contribute some of my skill set to this climb. Essentially it comes down to about five or six extremely difficult moves. Unfortunately, the third pitch didn't go down, which was a bummer, but it's all right. You know, we didn't have a lot of time to figure out all the moves, so it was a Hail Mary for sure. But it was really fun. There were some other really impressive pitches up high. A uh, 10 pitch line from bottom to top, that's pretty fantastic. It'll certainly be one of the best lines in all of Sinai. 
topping out was definitely the highlight. Climbing for me, it's something I've always loved to do, purely for climbing itself. But the other thing is that it takes you to just some of the most incredible places. This trip was incredible in the climbing aspect, but that was almost like secondary. Climbing was a vehicle in order to get to some place that is truly amazing.